We're gonna look at two new routers from Triton, a little one and a big one, starting with the little guy here. This is in the category of trim routers. If you're not familiar with these for your shop, you should be. Trim routers are very easy to control with one hand. They're great for stuff like running chamfers and roundovers on your projects and even rabbits, like we're about to do in a second here. Triton's got a lot of cool stuff going with this one. It's variable speed. Variable speed is great for controlling the RPM of the bit relative to the wood that you're cutting. Improves your cut quality. With this motor, I can swap it from a fixed base into a plunge base. So a lot of versatility there, and I'll show you applications for both. The other thing that's pretty neat here is this setup. With this guide, which has a ball bearing on it right there, if you've got nothing but a straight bit, but you need to wrap at the edge of a board, we can do that using this. So the bottom line is we can take any cutter without a ball bearing and turn it into a bit with a ball bearing by using this guide. So here's how that works. Instead of a ball bearing on the bit riding on the edge of your stock, the ball bearing on that guide is gonna ride on the edge. And that's what controls the position of the router bit. So in this case, I wanna do a rabbit. That's just a straight cutter. Technically, it's not a rabbiting bit. But when I place this on my work and I engage, I start cutting, that roller bearing is gonna limit my travel laterally and it's gonna stop me at the depth of the rabbit. Then I can move forward from there. That is a great add-on to add versatility to what's already a really versatile tool. Now, swapping out is very, very easy to do. Loosen the thumb screw. Now, of course, with a plunge router, we can plunge in and out of our stock. So the benefit to that is gonna be if I have a cut, like I'm about to do, where I have a distinct start point and stop point, I'll be able to plunge into the work, make the cut, and then come out at a stop point, where with a fixed base, the router bit is always a set distance beyond the base. One of the neat things with this unit is that it comes with this winder and I can use this to control the base. So if you end up with this in a table application, you've got a built-in router lift. You don't need a router lift, to, you don't need to add a router lift because I can use that to control the base, which means I'm controlling the depth of cut of the bit by simply dialing this, not trying to control it from here. It gives you much better control over what you're doing here and let you really finitely dial in your depth of cut. Now, something like this, that would be our plunge application. So in order to make this happen, gonna touch down. Use my stop rod to control my depth of cut. And what we're looking at doing here is a bow tie. Bow tie is a great example of a cut that requires a distinct start and stop point. I can't just sweep in from the end and start hollowing out that bow tie. I have to start right on the bow tie.
The way this will work on a bow tie with a router bit is you'll keep working your way around and then take the rest of the waste out with a chisel, whatever you can't get with the router bit. Handy addition to the shop, and again, in this case, versatile because we've got both the plunge base and the fixed base included in one kit. So it gives you the ability to do both types of operations. One of the things that I love about this is not every trim router out there comes with two bases. And having that opportunity to toggle back and forth between fixed base and plunge base is really important. With templates, like I'm set up with here to do a bow tie, we really want to be in a plunge base there so that we can enter and exit the cut cleanly. Other work, you want to have that opportunity to use the fixed base like I showed you in the video. It's a lot of fun for me to do this, and I hope it's fun for you as well to have the opportunity to watch these product videos. And part of the goal here is to help make you a more educated consumer. So when you're doing your tool shopping, we're zeroing in on exactly what you need and what's going to help you out in your shop.